police would be like, these crazy kids stole my chickens and... <laughs> Hello! Today we're going to use an idiom, in touch. We're also going to use a picture and we're going to create a conversation. Great! First, let's talk about the idiom, in touch. So, what does it mean? I'm so glad you asked. We use in touch when we want to stay in contact or communication with someone. So, we want to have an ongoing relationship with them where we can communicate. We, we can use in touch in different ways. We can say, stay in touch. I need to stay in touch with you. Be in touch. Okay, I'll be in touch. Keep in touch. Henry, please keep in touch with your mother. Or, get in touch. Okay, I'll get in touch with you. So, they all have in touch in them, and they're very similar. The first three are basically maintaining the relationship. You have been in touch in the past. You have communicated in the past. Maybe not frequently, uh, but you've commun communicated somewhat. And the, th the fourth one is a little bit different. It's possible that you could have communicated in the past, but for whatever reason, right now, you need to establish contact with that person. Maybe there's a business deal, an arrangement, something that needs to be talked about. Okay, I'll get in touch with you. Uh, yes, we can get in touch to talk about the business deal or something like that. So there are four different ways to use it, but they're all pretty similar. It just means when we want to stay in contact or keep in communication with someone. So let's see an example. If you don't get in touch with the lawyer, I won't be able to stay in touch with my ex-wife and kids. So we have two examples here. We have in touch and in touch. The first one uses get in touch. So you need to make contact with the lawyer so we can communicate, right? And if you don't do it, then I won't be able to stay in touch. I won't be able to maintain communication with my ex-wife and kids. So you need to call the lawyer. You need to text the lawyer, email something to get in contact, to get in touch. And then I can stay in touch with my ex-wife and kids. I can keep communicating with them. All right. So, now we're going to use the idiom and a picture and create a conversation. I think first, let's take a look at the picture. And we're going to talk about it and describe it. Okay. So, in this picture, I see two... I would say teenagers, you could say two boys, or I don't think they're very old. Um, I'd say probably two teenagers, two male teenagers, or two guys standing, and they're leaning against a fence. I'm not sure, maybe it's the deck, maybe it's the front or the back part of a house, and there's a deck, you can see they're leaning against it. The environment and the background, I'd say they're close to a woods, and woods or a jungle, I don't know, a lot of trees, a lot of green, a lot of vegetation, which just means leaves and trees and stuff like that in the background. And it doesn't really look like they're caring, <laughs> they don't care too much about the trees and leaves and stuff. Looks like they're both kind of focused downward. Maybe they're uh, concentrating and very focused on their conversation. So Pete, he has a blue short sleeve shirt on. And it looks like he has like tan colored pants. We can't see if they're shorts or long pants because we can only see his up, the upper part of his body. Pete has, I would say, short hair and it's dark brown hair. He's not wearing a hat or anything. And it looks like we can just barely see that he's wearing a watch. All right. So it's pretty simple outfit, simple clothing. Rick has a backpack on. That's a big difference that you can see between Rick and Pete. And the backpack is uh, the the pocket in the back or the pouch in the back is multicolored, kind of like a rain rainbow colors. But the main part of the backpack is, looks like a dark red. 
maybe maroon, which is like an even darker red. He's wearing brown pants as well, but pants or shorts, we don't know. But his pants are a little bit darker brown than Pete's. Rick also has on a, looks like a t-shirt. Maybe it's a collar right there, so it might be like a polo shirt with a few buttons in front, kind of like this one. Uh, Rick has pretty short hair as well. Not super short, I'd say a little bit longer than Pete's. And Rick's hair color is brown, but it's not as dark brown as Pete's. Okay? And we can't tell if he's wearing a watch or jewelry or anything like that because we can't see his hands. All right. So let's see what they're talking about. Looks like Pete's going to start the conversation. Oh, and before I do it, ah, I almost forgot. I'm going to summarize summarize what I see in the picture. So if I just quick saw this picture and I only wanted to describe it in a few sentences, I would say, okay, I see two young guys leaning against uh, the railing of a deck, looks like, and they're staring downward towards something on the ground or maybe they're having a conversation. And it looks like they're near a big woods or forest. Okay, so let's see what they're talking about. So Pete starts the conversation. After we steal the prize chickens <laughs> from their coop, we'll need to lay low. Rick, I agree. We'll have to keep in touch through our secret channels. Pete. How loud do you think the chickens will be? Does the farmer have a shotgun? Rick, stop worrying so much. I'll be in touch when the chickens are plump. <laughs> All right. First part is we're going to make the idioms bold. I know he says in touch right here. Make it bold so we can it stands out. Another time over here. And it looks like Rick is the one that uses the idiom both times. Okay, so I'm going to say the conversation at regular speed. Follow along. Pete, after we steal the prize chickens from their coop, we'll need to lay low. Rick, I agree. We'll have to keep in touch through our secret channels. Pete, how loud do you think the chickens will be? Does the farmer have a shotgun? Rick, stop worrying so much. I'll be in touch when the chickens are plump. So Rick is the first one to use the idiom. He says, we'll have to keep in touch through our secret channels. And we'll get to what secret channels are in a minute. But when he says keep in touch... You could say, we'll need to maintain communication or keep communicating with each other. And how? With our secret channels. We'll be right back to that. Rick also says, in touch again. This time he says, be in touch. Last time he said, keep in touch. And it's quite similar. Uh, I'll be in touch. This means that Pete's not exactly sure when Rick will contact him, but Rick will be in touch. He will contact him. He'll communicate with him somehow. All right. So let's talk about some of the vocabulary in this conversation. Let's start from the top. So we have prize chickens. These aren't just regular chickens. I'm quite sure we know what a chicken is, but let's look it up and make sure. All right. So if I type in chickens, all right, yay, everyone knows what a chicken is, right? But these are not regular chickens. They are prize chickens. Hmm, what do you think that means? Well, sometimes, it's very common in the United States, we have what's called a fair. Uh, and let's see. See if it shows up. A fair, which is like a carnival, 
And sometimes the people that work in the carnival or they have all the rides and stuff, they travel around to different cities and they set up all the stuff and then uh, people can come and they pay and they can have fun and laugh and all that stuff. But also, sometimes people bring their animals to, let's see if it shows up, and it's pretty com common to call it the county fair. And people will bring their farm animals and they will uh, compete with each other. So let's see, down here, looks like they brought a cow and a, ba a calf, a baby cow. And so they'll have judges that go around and look at the animals and see which are the best quality, which are the nicest looking, which would be the most valuable. And then they give them prizes. Uh, they might give them like a blue ribbon, which means that they're the number one. So if someone got a blue ribbon, blue ribbon prize, that would mean that they <laughs> they won, and they had maybe the best cow or the best chicken or something like that. So in our conversation, we're talking about prize chickens. So looks like Pete and Rick are looking at a farm, and they're thinking they want to steal the prize chickens. Who knows if they want to eat them, sell them, or whatever, but. They want to steal the chickens, and not just regular chickens, the prize chickens, the best chickens, the one, the chickens that won an award at the county fair, all right? And they're going to steal the prize chickens from their coop. Hmm, so what is a coop? Let's type in chicken coop. A chicken coop is just where the chickens sleep and live. So you can see that there is a fence, it might not be super clear, but there's a wire fence. So air and water and we can see through it, but the chickens can't get out of it. So this would be called a chicken coop. And if it's there's an inside part, then there are probably like shelves where the, uh, kind of like shelves, where the chickens can stand up on top and then they sleep and then they lay their eggs and all stuff like that. Chickens. All right, so let's go back to the conversation. So after we steal the prize chickens from their coop, we'll need to lay low. So after we take those marvelous, valuable chickens from their, like it's like a chicken house, you know, where we, we just saw where the chickens live, we'll need to lay low. Hmm, what does lay low? When you say lay low, if someone wants to lay low, they've probably done something illegal or bad or at least something that they don't want to get caught for they don't want someone to catch them and say hey you know you're in trouble something like that so after Pete and Rick steal the prize chickens they need to lay low because if they don't lay low then everyone might know that they stole the chickens and since these are prize chickens the farmers probably gonna be really pissed off <laughs> and you probably call the police and be like these crazy kids stole my chickens and Ah, they got to pay for them or something like that. So lay low means to like hide, to maybe stay at home, to stay in your room, don't go outside where people can see you, or maybe run off to a different place where, you know, so you don't attract a lot of, a lot of attention. All right. So Rick, we'll have to keep in touch through secret channels. So after they lay low, they steal the chickens. And then they gotta hide. They don't want, they need some time to pass before they either sell the chickens or move the chickens. So they lay low and we'll have to keep in touch through our secret channels. Secret channels, well, channels of communication are just ways to communicate. So maybe they have, they use a secret cell phone, nobody knows the number. Or they have secret email accounts and nobody knows who the, who's the email belongs to. Or maybe they, I don't know, they write letters in code to each other, or they make marks on a tree, or they have some secret way of communication that other people won't understand, right? So those are just secret channels, hidden ways to communicate. So Pete goes on, how long, how loud do you think the chickens will be? <laughs> I bet the chickens will be very loud, especially since they're uncomfortable having been stolen from their nice, comfortable chicken coop. And here's the big question, does the farmer have a shotgun? 
hmm, <laughs> probably a good idea to figure that out. So what is a shotgun? Hmm, this could be, this could make or break their plan. So let's look up, what is a shotgun? So we have lots of different kinds of guns, and let's see if I can find specifically, aha, here we are. Uh, let's look at this one. A shotgun. Uh, okay, so this is a shotgun. Let's see if there's maybe any other pictures might be a little bit better. Okay, so a shotgun is a type of hunting weapon, right? And the shotgun is specific that when it shoots out, it doesn't shoot just one bullet. It shoots a bunch, depending on the kind of shot or the kind of cartridges, um, it might be little BBs, tiny little metal or lead pellets, and, or it could be like buckshot or for shooting geese or ducks or big, <laughs> big steel balls inside. But either way, the idea of a shotgun is that it doesn't have one bullet that shoots straight out and it's just one piece of metal. No. It has a whole bunch of small pieces of metal or lead inside or steel that when they come out, they spread out. So when they spread out, there's a much greater chance of hitting your target. Now, shotguns aren't meant for, meant for long range shooting, but up fairly close. If something's in front of you and you shoot it with a shot, shotgun, you're probably going to hit it because there's not just one piece of metal coming out. There are many pieces of metal coming out. So this is a shotgun. Bang! All right, back to the conversation. So does the farmer have a shotgun? Hmm. If the farmer does have a shotgun, it's probably right close to the door. Maybe the farmer has problems with foxes or wolves or dogs or something trying to steal their chickens and eat the chickens. So the farmer might keep a shotgun close by so he can shoot whatever animal or people that are coming to steal and mess with his chickens. So if the farmer has a shotgun, that would be bad news. They may need to rethink their plan to steal the prized chickens. But Rick, Rick doesn't seem to care. Stop worrying so much. I'll be in touch when the chickens are plump. Hmm, what do you think plump is? Hmm, a plump chicken is the opposite of a skinny chicken. So let's see what kind of pictures we have for chickens. Let's see. Oh, I would say this right here is a nice plump chicken, right? If you pull off all the feathers and you, well, you kill it, <laughs> you pull off all the feathers and you want to cook it and eat it, the pieces of meat are very plump. There's a nice, you know, big, big pieces of meat and it's easy to cook and nice to eat. So a plump chicken it's kind of like a fat chicken, but just like big size. It's going to provide a, a great meal. All right. So it looks like Pete and Rick are going to wait until the chickens are plump. So maybe they have a plan. Maybe they're going to sell the plump chickens to someone who loves to eat chickens, or maybe they're just waiting to make their own meal. I don't know. So this was our conversation, and it was Pete and Rick, and I will summarize the conversation in just a couple sentences. Pete and Rick are chatting about their plan to steal some chickens from a farmer. And they're also making plans what will happen after they steal the chickens. They might have to lay low and they need to do some re more research because they need to check and see whether the farmer has a shotgun. <laughs> okay. So today we use the idiom in touch and a picture. And we use that picture and the idiom to create a conversation. Wonderful, exciting, and incredible. <laughs> All right. I had a great time teaching this lesson. I hope you have a fabulous day. See you next time.